Hey baby girls, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to transform these thin, sparse, overplucked brows into a fuller brow. First, I'm going to cleanse the brows and remove the makeup and any oils on the skin. I then make sure the brows are dry and I analyse the hairs to decide on my products and timings. My first step to lamination is solution 1. I empty my sachet on the bottom of the dappened dish and then evenly work the product through, coating each strand of hair to ensure all the area is fully saturated. I get asked a lot why I don't use glue before this first step. With the brand I'm using, it doesn't require any glue to set the brows into place. I'm going to show you a tip to make sure them hairs lay flat without the need for glue. But first, I'm going to pop some film on to keep the heat in and to keep them hairs laid flat. I will set my timer for 3 minutes. So here is where the tip comes in. After a minute or so the hairs become super soft and the process has started to work. This means you can now brush the hairs in the direction you require and they will stay without the need for glue. Once I'm happy with how they are sat, I cover them back up and leave them for the remaining time. My timer is now up and the product has been on for 3 minutes, so I will remove all excess of the product with my applicator. I then will go in with a damp cotton pad and make sure every bit of product is off the skin and the hairs. Then I open sachet number 2 and on dry brows I start to apply this all over the hairs. I then like to go in with my micro wand. I brush the brows to where I would like them to be set. Once I'm happy, I cover the brows with some fresh film and set my stopwatch for seven minutes. Whilst my timer is going, I sometimes like to use the back of my brow wand and move any hairs that I can see that needs reworking. Once my 7 minutes is up, I remove the film and then remove the product using my applicator. Then I go in again and remove with some water to make sure there is no product remaining and still developing. I then mix my tint, today I'm using light brown with a hint of grey just to take that warmth away. That also sounds like a nursery rhyme and I kind of like it. I cover the whole brow with this tint as I don't get any staining on the skin when using this brand. This means I can grab any blonde hidden hairs when using this and I don't have to worry about any harsh staining or lines. I set my timer and remove after one minute using a damp cotton pad. I then apply a little barrier to the skin. I use a little translucent powder on a brush and pat onto the areas I'm about to wax. This will stop grazing when doing this treatment. I then want to draw in some rough guidelines to where I want to wax. Hayley has one brow higher than the other so I'm going to try and balance these out.
Using my brow spatula, which is actually a lip wand, I begin to trace out where I want to wax. I go over this until it sat in the perfect position. Then I remove using thin wax strips, using firm pressure and taut skin. I remove in smaller sections, this is so I have more control and also so I can keep the skin as taut as possible. I missed a few hairs so I just go back in with the tweezers. Then I'm ready for the top of the brows. Baby girls, if you haven't already switched to this applicator, I suggest you try. It's a game changer. The middle is then ready to wax. As you can see, I haven't gone right up to the bulb of the brow. This is because her brows have been over plucked and we are trying to grow in that section. So keeping them hairs is a must for this process. Moving over to the next brow, I repeat the same steps. So when I applied this strip, I pressed down and a little wax spread into the area I didn't want. So by using a sharp end of a wax spatula, you can glide the stick to separate the wax and the hairs. This didn't pull any of them wanted hairs out that we intended to keep. I then use some oil and remove any bits of sticky wax. I then give the brows a brush to get ready for the threading. I always like to thread around the brows after I've waxed, as there are so many fluffy hairs that sit lower or higher than your waxing lines. I always like to finish with my highlighter after. This defines the shape under the brow and ensures me my points are perfect and I haven't left any hairs out of place. Using my Pro Pencil by HD Brows, I then try to mimic hair strokes in any areas that could do with one or two more hairs. This is only makeup, but I find doing this makes the brows look perfect and also encourages clients to keep on growing the brows as maybe one day they will no longer need any makeup. And there we have it, some beautiful, natural, but fuller brows achieved by the power of lamination. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found this helpful for you and your brows. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and leave comments below if you have any questions. I really love reading your beautiful comments. Thanks again and I will see you in the next video. Bye.